Good morning students. Welcome back to the EVS2 class. Today's date is 26th August 2020. So we have been doing uh, the part 2 that is India's reverse from lesson number 4 reverse. So in our previous class we have discussed few topics. Let's do a quick recap of what we did. So the first point is the major Indian rivers are Indas, Ganga, Narmada, Tapi, Godavari, Krishna, Mahanadi and Brahmaputra. So these are the most important rivers of India. There are other rivers but these are the most important. Then we have came to know that there are two source, major source of Indian rivers. Number one is the Himalaya or the Karakoram. The Himalayan or the Karakoram, sorry, the Himalayan and the Karakoram mountain ranges which is located in the northern India and the second is the Vindhya and the Satpura mountain ranges and the Chotanagpur Plateau in central India or the Sahyadri hills in western India. So the first source is located in northern India and the second source is located in central and western India. Then we have come to know about perennial and non-perennial rivers. Now what are perennial rivers? The rivers which have uh, water throughout the, or the water flows throughout the year. These rivers are called perennial. Means they never dry out. Every time the 12 months of the year they have water in it and it flows and it continuously flow uh, has a flow. Okay. So these are called perennial rivers. And non-perennial rivers are those rivers which does not have a constant flow. They have a periodic flow. For example, during the monsoon when the rainfall comes, these rivers used to flow. And uh, that's why these are called non-perennial rivers or periodic rivers. Clear? Now let's move towards the next uh, topic of discussion that is sources of rivers. So we have already discussed the main sources. Let us discuss in detail. So the first one we have come to know is the Himalaya and the Karakoram. Right? The, the Himalaya and the Karakoram ranges. Where it is located? It is located in the northern India. Now we already know that Himalayas and the Karakoram, they have a very high mountains. I have already shown the pictures in the live class that these mountain ranges have the world's most highest mountains. Therefore, highest mountains means highest peaks and that means these peaks will be covered by snow. The whole mountains are covered by snow. In the pictures during the live class, most of the mountains are covered with snow. Now, during the summer, this, uh, these snows used to melt and they flows down the mountain side in small, uh, in small, small streams. So, and then these streams, they connect it uh, or they flow into the river. And then these rivers, this particular rivers are called snow fed rivers. That means their source is from the snow, from the snow of the mountains, right? From snow of the mountains, it used to flow and it, uh, the stream used to flow down into the river and then it joins the river and these rivers are called snow fed rivers. As you can see here on the picture, these are the snow capped mountains. From here, the streams have been came out during the summer the um, uh, snow melts and then the stream flows and then it joins into the river now this river is flowing and this river is called the snow fed rivers here then then let's move towards the next one okay so now we come to the glacier fed rivers so we there is a difference between snow and glacier glacier is a large mass of ice okay so we have already uh, discussed about glaciers. So when rivers are formed due to the melting of the glaciers, they are called glacier fed rivers. So glacier fed rivers are the ones that comes out from the glacier, not from the snow, but from a glacier. When a large mass of glacier uh, or a part of the, sorry, a small part of glacier that, uh, comes out from the large mass and then it melts down then 
this water then connects to the river and then these rivers are called glacier fed rivers always remember snow fed rivers and glacier fed rivers then we have the rivers of the uh, this one rain fed rivers as you can see on the picture there is a difference between the snow fed rivers the glacier fed rivers and the rain fed rivers now these rivers uh, receive water from the monsoon rain that's why they are called rain fed rivers now the rivers of central and southern india falls into this category that means the non perennial rivers clear the central and the southern india now which are the central and the southern do you remember the vindhya and sandhya the second source yes so the rivers that receive water from the monsoon rain are called rain fed rivers the rivers of central and southern india falls into this category so but these rivers color is very different rain fed rivers colors are very different because when the rain comes it comes uh, it uh, rains on the mountains and the uh, mud every state every area has different kind of color of mud so it brings the mud down so this has a red soil if you can see that's why the color of the river is red now let's move towards the next one this is the differences between the snow fed or glacier fed rivers and rain fed rivers now let's discuss the differences snow or glacier fed rivers of northern india so remember snow or glacier fed rivers of northern india because these rivers continuously flow clear don't forget these are some of the features you don't uh, don't get confused with it and rain fed rivers of central and southern india why because these are seasonal we have already talked about the non perennial and perennial so perennial are the uh, rivers which flow continuously and the non perennial rivers are the periodic rivers therefore perennial rivers will fall under the snow or glacier fed rivers of northern india and non perennial rivers or the seasonal rivers that means they lose a lot of water during summer will fall under the heading of rain fed rivers of central and southern india then under the heading of snow or glacier fed rivers we have flows slowly when they reach the plains initially it starts very fast because it comes from the sloping right and uh, but we are not talking about the slope but we are talking about the rivers right when the stream joins the rivers therefore it joins at the plains therefore it flows slowly when the when they reach the plains and rain fed rivers flow faster than rivers of northern india due to rocky and uneven rain uh, uneven land because we have the uneven and uh, sloping and lots of uh, uneven uh, this one land in uh, in our states so these rivers flow very fast than the northern india so you have to compare it northern india rivers always flow slowly and the central and southern indian rivers they flow very fast then uh, snow or glacier fed mount rivers have fewer waterfalls that means a waterfall is formed when water falls from a great height that means when the water falls from a great height you have seen i hope you have visited shillong chirapunji and darjeeling you have seen the waterfall it falls from a great height right and so therefore glacier and snow fed doesn't have any waterfall only very less waterfalls are there but rain fed rivers have many waterfalls for example jog falls in karnataka so these are some of the differences between the snow fed or glacier fed rivers and rain fed rivers then we come to the features of indian rivers in the high areas a river flows fast it rubs against rocks and breaks them into smaller pieces it carries these small rocks and stones as well as soil along uh, soil down along with it that means we are talking about the high area we have to, uh, we have come to know about the stages of the journey of a river right we have learned it we have discussed it so how many stages were there there were three stages 
high, middle and low, right? In the high area, what happens? That's why it's already mentioned here. In the high areas, what happens? There is a slope, right? Mountain is like a sloping. So when the, when the water comes down, it comes, it flows very fast. And when it comes down very fast, what happens? It takes, it brings along with it lots of smaller pieces of rocks, sand and other materials along with it. Then a river leaves small rocks and stones as well as soil at the bottom of valleys or takes them down to the plains. That comes into the middle area where this uh, soil and muddy materials are being deposited. So here is the river for source as you can see on the picture. These are uh, the, the rivers are coming from the mountains therefore their flow will be very fast. Then here is the middle area. So they will deposit the uh, nutrients or the materials in the middle area as well as in the low areas. If you have any problem understanding the features, these features are very similar to the journey of a river. It has been explained uh, in a similar way. Just look into the photo of the, the picture of the, this one diagram of uh, the journey of the river and then relate these things. The high area, the first point belongs to the high area. Then the second point belongs to the middle area. Now let's move towards the next one. These rivers also form large basins. These basins are called river basin. A river basin is the area which gets water and silt from the main river and its tributaries. So as you can see here, uh, so the river here and these are the tributaries, okay? These are tributaries, small, small tributaries. So these tributaries and rivers, this is the land. This land gets all the silt, the sedimentary or the silt from, the, from its tributaries and the river. And this is how the Ganga makes the plains very fertile for cultivation. We already know that sedimentary and silt, they... Uh, makes the soil fertile. So when they comes down uh, carrying the, uh, the silt and sediments, they um, in the, during the plains, when they reach the plains, they deposit it. And that basin, not only the main river, but its tributaries also do, uh, deposit this silt. And this, re this is called, this area is called the river basin. Here is also the Ganga. Uh, you can see this picture, the Ganga. The tributary and the main Ganga is meeting here and the soil, uh, sorry, the, uh, you can see the settlement here. So when there is settlement means there, the soil is very fertile. It is good for cultivation. It is good for trees. It, good, it is good for plants and animals also. And also for people, it is a source of water, right? They can drink, they can uh, use the water uh, for their uses. So this is called the river basin and please underline the river basin. Then we come to the next one, the rain fed eastern peninsula rivers such as Mahanadi, Krishna and Godavari flow towards the east like the Ganga. They deposit silt in the middle and low areas. Deltas form at their mouths. These rivers flows into the Bay of Bengal. Now, Mahanadi, I have given you the picture of the map. There is already mentioned the tributaries and the rivers. As you can see, Mahanadi, Krishna and Godavari. They are at the west, sorry, um, in the southern part or the central part, right? So they move from there towards the Ganga. Ganga is in the north. So it is moving towards the Ganga. Okay, sorry, not on the, uh, sorry, not on the north, but the, in the east. So it is moving towards the east um, and it flows into the Ganga. They deposit silt in the middle and low areas. Now deltas form at their mouths. These rivers flow into the Bay of Bengal. So this is how these rivers actually work. They join one another and then they deposit the sedimentary and silt and when the sedimentary silt are deposited again and again at their mouths, what happens? The delta is formed and these rivers flow into the Bay of Bengal. Clear? Let's move to the next one. The last point of the feature. 
some of the main rain-fed rain -fed peninsula rivers such as Narmada, Peria and Tapi flow toward the west. Now why it is called peninsula? Because the southern part of India is the peninsula part, right? So they have the Narmada, Peria and Tapi and they flow towards the west. From south to the west, they flow faster than the northern rivers and do not deposit as much silt in the middle and low areas because they are rain fed and rain fed rivers are faster than the northern rivers. They do not form deltas. These rivers flow into the Arabian Sea. So these rain fed uh, peninsula rivers, they do not form, form deltas and they flows into the Arabian Sea. So go now let's discuss the questions from the train my brain <clears throat> question number one is how can we classify indian rivers so we can classify indian rivers on uh, according to their sources and also the level of water that means the perennial and non-perennial right so we can write either source uh, one is the sources of water major source of water and then uh, it's a uh, uh, level of water then question number two is name any three peninsular rivers. You can write Narmada, sorry, you can write Godavari, you can write Krishna, Kaveri, etc. Okay. Then we come to the next question from the uh, EVS workbook. This is question number 12. Define river basin. How are river basins useful to us? A river basin is the area which gets water from water and silt from the main river and its tributaries. The river basin makes the plains very fertile for cultivation. Then the question number 13, we have outlined a major difference between westward and eastward flowing rivers on the Indian Peninsula. So now let's get back to the this one, the features. Okay, as you can see here, this is the uh, rivers that flows west. That means the westward flowing rivers the westward uh, peninsula rivers so one of the feature is that these features sorry these rivers they do not form deltas and the second is these rivers flow into the arabian sea in the same way next we have the eastward eastward flowing rivers are this one so what are the features that these eastward flowing rivers they form deltas at their mouth and these rivers flow into the Bay of Bengal. So we have got the answer. So the first one is westward flowing peninsula rivers. Uh, uh, actually, uh, they form deltas. Sorry, they do not form deltas. And eastward flowing peninsula rivers, they form deltas at their mouth. And then we have the next uh, point, which is westward flowing rivers, they flows into the Arabian Sea and the eastward flowing rivers, they flows into the Bay of Bengal. Next, we have the multiple choice question, question number 15. Lakhan is fishing in a river that flows into the Arabian Sea. Which river is it? So, the options are already given and the answer is C, that is Narmada. Then we have question number 16. The Sardar Sarovar Dam is an important river project. Which of these is not a function of this dam? And the answer is the emerging island, uh, idols. So dam, we don't do the, so in dam, we don't do the immersion, immersions of idols. Then we have the short answer questions. Question number 15. In recent times, a lot of water is diverted from the rivers to the industries, leaving farmers helpless. Mention any two ways in which the farmers are affected. Now, if river water is diverted to the industries, what will happen? The farmers will not get water for irrigation to grow crops, right? Now, what will happen? Also, the deposits of silt bought by the river would decrease, which would affect the fertility of the soil. So, this is how it affects it. So, this question we will be uh, doing it in my next class because it comes under the uses of the rivers. So, I will be discussing this one in detail in my next class. 
till then go through each one of uh, each questions very uh, detailing in detail and also through the chapters thoroughly so get ready for the unit test and prepare well i'm going to end my class here